Hey, what's up, guys? The ranked 27 player in the world just built a Diabolical Mortar bait deck with a newly buffed Monk, allowing him to stay alive longer so you can make masterful outplays and counter all the overpowered ranged cards. And the Monk makes magic happen on offense when you're constantly bombarding your opponent. With this deck specifically, when you're spamming Mortars, rushing through with Wall Breakers, and having Mother Witch Piggies parade through, the opponent's bound to drop units down the middle, granting the Evolve Bomber an opportunity to rack up thousands of damage. But usually, Evolve Bomber gets removed by Fireballs, Arrows, and Barb Barrels causing the opponent to frantically fling spells at the Evolve Bomber to remove it at all costs. But in this deck, the Monk protects the Evolve Bomber so they can never touch it. Instead of taking around 800 damage and taking a negative elixir trade, they're perpetually taking damage and crying the entire game. If you can predict your opponent's spells, you'll instantly win the match. If you only have one evolution, use the Evolve Bomber. But the Evolve Wall Barkers or Evolve Mortar works too. It's time to evolve our meditation techniques to the next level to assert dominance. And a massive monk hug to everyone that's using credit code Surtag to make all the daily videos possible. Shout out to NordVPN for sponsoring the video today. Wi-Fi networks, especially free public Wi-Fi, can be compromised by criminals to intercept your data. They put themselves between you and your destination, which allows them to spy on your data and even alter it. When you go to your local cafe and connect a cafe-free Wi-Fi network without thinking, it can be a huge trap. Criminals will set up seemingly safe networks that are like an evil twin so you connect to that Wi-Fi. And while you're browsing, criminals will be watching, harvesting any sensitive data that you enter into the computer. The solution is super simple. Use NordVPN. By encrypting your online traffic with NordVPN, you'll keep yourself safe and hard counter all the criminals. While you're traveling, the criminals' tactics will get nerfed to the point they won't even work anymore. When I traveled to the Clash Royale World Finals in Finland, I had to connect to a lot of Wi-Fi networks along my way. And NordVPN came up clutch, allowing everything to work out well and keep the daily upload schedule even when I was gone. It's the fastest VPN on the planet, and it keeps you safe from malware with threat protection. Become safer online with a single click, and check out NordVPN using my link in the description of the video. Hey, we got a game against someone with the Goldenite banner. So, wonder if he's going to be using the other buff champion, Hate to break it to him. I don't think that Golden Knight is near as good as the monk after the buff. Wait, the guy's gonna go Golem in the back first play. Who does that, dude? Usually, Golem players have to figure out that they're not gonna go head first into an Inferno Dragon, Inferno Tower, melting him with Pekka. Like, you are crazy to do this. It's almost as if he believes I'm not crazy and he's safe to do the wildest play out there. Anyway, we're able to go and push him back and we force out an early arrows, which genuinely isn't bad for me. Because if I'm able to go and use my monk protection program, and then I can get another minion horde here down, this minion horde placement is prime. And the reason is, if it goes and kills the golem, it's not gonna die. If you guys are wondering, minions behind a golem will never die. Because the golem explodes, and then the golem will damage the cards in front of it, but not in the back. You guys can watch the guard here, it shouldn't take any damage. And that's one of the reasons that I really like doing that. So I think that we probably wanna go in for a mortar here so we don't lose our tower to the bomber. And then I think we're in a decent spot because we're going to force out Barbarians from our bro. And if bro is going to go in for Barbarians, we best believe we're going to be going in for our Bomber and probably killing all those bomb. Oh my gosh. Guess not killing all the Barbarians. Also, I think that the Bomber would have died there. For whatever reason, I'm just not used to the Evolved Bomber after the nerf because its range is substantially lower. Anyway, this guy wasn't identifying it. I wasn't, so it worked out pretty well. Wait, why does this guy have Zap and Arrows? Oh no, this is kind of traumatic, not gonna lie. The arrows are out of cycle, and he's laughing at me. He thinks he's won the match. We gotta go and shut him up and steal his towers, all right? First thing, we're gonna go and put some duct tape over his mouth with the moat muted, and then we're gonna go in for the minion horde with the monk tanking. This is gonna be really hard for him to defend. Actually, I don't think it's possible. There's no way. If he decides to go for arrows, we are going to make a prediction with the monk ability. If that works out, that would be wonderful. If not, it is what it is. We just wanted to keep our minions alive just long enough to guarantee that we're able to snag the tower. And then the cool thing that we can do is we can mortar in the other side, go in for a bomber directly on top of the barbarians, expect him to most likely go in for arrows, and then go for wall breakers to go and pull back the barbarians over the river and through the woods. There's no way! That was actually big brain! I did a good play against it! Let's go! We're showing the skillless bomber and all these annoying cards like Minion Horde. But then we're showing the full skill that you can do with Wall Breakers at the same time. I wonder if we don't lose a single tower here. The Minion Horde is about to send him to a Shadow Realm. We might be able to go and pop through with the Monk ability as well. Heck, we're going to go and knock everything back. Then we're going to go and use the Mortar to go and hopefully distract the Mini Pekka so we can get guards down. There's no way we're actually going to guard our butt. There's no way. I might be able to go in for Wall Breakers and 3-crown the Golem player. Have Golem players... Like this ever gone three crown before? 
I thought it was their mission statement to make every game madness and three crown their opponents. But the script got flipped as we sent this man flying out of the match, collecting all the crowds. After demolishing Golem, we've gained a couple ranks to 4,400 in the world. So this guy is spawning the endless amount of skeletons in the banner from his witch. I really hope he doesn't have a lot of skeletons in the deck because it's going to be a bad time when he flows right into a mother witch and we convert them to our team. It's kind of an actual instant win for us. Especially since we are not running the Cannoneer. We've got the Prince's Tower to help us out as well. And he just did the Fatal Flaw. If anyone decides the arrows on the guards, you definitely need the arrows for our Wall Breakers and Minion Horde. My man is not ready. So the cool thing that we can do here is the Monk ability is actually useful against the Cannoneer. If we're able to... Oh no. Or maybe it's still going to be fine. I hope that we get one shot. He's going to zap because he has to kill the rest of the Wall Breakers. And he's going to lose the entire Giant Skeleton to Minion Horde. That is ridiculous. I don't have to spend any extra elixir. I can maybe miner in front so then we can get some extra damage as well. I think the minion gets one or two slaps. Nice. And then the miner is just having free reign to inflict pain. So identifying our opponent's deck as a giant skeleton royal ghost deck pretty early on means that, yeah, I was going to say it'll probably be a royal giant deck or some weird royal hogs deck with mother witch, but it's not the royal hogs mother witch version. My man is packing RG. So I really thought it was going to be giant skeleton plus mother witch and then royal hogs, but... The Royal Giant does make sense too. It has got a lot of popularity in the meta. So when one of the Wall Breakers dies, then I think the other one connects to the tower. I think that's okay. Yeah, definitely one of them will connect. Let's go and we blast the Fisherman too. It looks like it's about to yoink the Bomber, but it can't get it down fast enough. So I believe the Fisherman dies and doesn't give any value. We can knock back his Monk counters now with Giant Skeleton for Eternity. If he decides to go in for a giant skeleton, usually what he'll want to do is he'll want to go in for an aggressive play with a fisherman to go and pull our monk. But he can't do that anymore. Oh, wow. If only we could play piggy ping pong. If you could curse his cursed pigs and then throw more pigs at, back at the opponent, that's kind of one of the coolest things that I've wanted to see in Clash. Unfortunately, they don't let that happen. All right, so the guy's going to have ghost. Hmm. I guess we kind of saw that coming from a mile away. But we're ready to make this man pay. No, it's going to lock onto the Evo Bomber, but he still goes in for arrows. Wait, we would have saved it with the Monk ability. That would have been awesome because he wouldn't have been able to kill the Evo Bomber. It would have stayed latched on the tower and he would have just lost. It's fine, though. It still works out in our favor if we're able to get a nice Mother Witch here. And then I think we can go in for a Bomber afterward and then somehow maybe just get a Monk down to knock back the Royal Giant. The strategy is simple. Knock back the RG or go in for the Monk ability to kill the Mother Witch finish off the fisherman with our mother witch as well in our tower, and then we can bombard our opponent with everything that we have. We've got 500 HP in a dream right now, and I believe it's gonna work out in our favor. We just need the evil bomber to lock in the tower. The wall breaker's gonna force out something in front of the tower, and that's what we needed, baby. Let's go. So this deck has the capability of crushing the opponent in come from behind situations that you would never expect. Being down a lot of damage in a pretty demoralizing position and still being able to win the match showcases the power of the overpowered evolutions. Especially when you can protect them with the monk and the pigs so you can extract endless value. As we pile on the medals with our pigs to 3,500 in the world. Hey, this guy's gonna have Electro Giant in the banner and that would be one of the best cards for us to play into. Because we got the mortar to go and pull the Electro Giant that doesn't shoot the Electro Giant so there's no reflection damage that he gets. And we also have the monk to knock it back. But of course, that's not what we're going to be playing against today. We would be too lucky to match into an Electro Giant, sir. Instead, we're going to get shocked by the recruits. So I definitely want to go for a minion horde right now and expect him to try to do something crazy. Yeah, he's going to have a balloon deck. So in this situation, he'll probably have arrows. We'll see, though. I, I don't believe that this minion horde is going to give me good value. It'll be too much to ask for in Clash. Wait, he went in for a fireball and it's another small spell? What? Are you kidding me right now? That was insane value, actually. Because he thought he could finish it off with a small spell, and then we tanked for it with a minor, then he had to overcommit with a fireball. So my guy dropped a solid six elixir on a five elixir card that was already bound to give us good value since it killed all the recruits. So we got monstrous value in single elixir, and now we're ready to go and snipe his power with our mortar. This is looking really good. So if he's going to have fishermen as well, it's just confirming my suspicions that the guy is bound to be running balloon. And in this type of situation, it's important that we use the monk ability because it's going to kill the archer, the skeleton dragons, and it's also going to put us in a profound position where the monk is going to have relatively high health and giving us counter push. So now I can go and guard him with the guards and go in for a miner because I think he's down an insane amount of elixir. I don't know if he's able to do anything here. 
I, I want to go in for an Evo Bomber, but at the same time, I believe it's just better to go Minion Horde. It's strictly better since he doesn't have a way of killing it. Remember, he has Fireball in his deck, but he doesn't have Elixir for that immediately. So it's going to be sketchy for him because he wants to Snowball or go in for some type of small spell. So then we can go Wall Breakers and just say, hey, now you have to Fireball them. <laughs> He's having to Fireball the Minion Horde every time. He doesn't get a choice. He doesn't get an option. It's negative trades all day long, bro. That's what we're feeding you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, hopefully we can be the winner if I can go for the Mortar here and get a connection. Don't think it's going to happen immediately, but maybe he's going to drop into something down the middle, enabling us to go in for the Bomber. Oh, man. I kind of want to finish everything off and go for Monk and then Evo Bomber, but it's a little bit of an aggressive stance, so I'm not going to roll with it just yet. I'm going to go for the Monk now, and then I think we can go and pal him with the Bomber soon. I believe that we can win. I believe that we can do it. I mean, this is ridiculous. I, he's not going to Fireball. He's going to Snowball. Oh, we almost pushed it back with the Monk. It didn't even matter. It's just body blocks. And it defends the possibility of him finishing off the Evo Bomber. The only way he could get onto the Bomber is fireballing, but he wasn't allowed to because the Monk was body blocking it. It was just sitting there and bullying this man. Oh, wait, this guy, I don't know if he pushed it. He did. Wait, he played that so well. That was extremely well played on our opponent's end. So if you guys notice what he did, he ended up going and pushing the balloon with the skeleton dragons. So the balloon bypassed the mortar and the mortar typically was able to pull in that position. So very, very well played on our opponent's end. Credit where credit is due. And it's a cool interaction to showcase that our opponent's a good player as well. So yeah, it's nice beating someone that's talented in the game that knows those tricks. It just happens that our deck is 10 times more tricky than his. The Evo Bomber Monk card combination is the epitome of toxicity. Nothing can hit it, so you hit up the tower for thousands of damage. Hey, this guy's got the pixelated barbarian in the banner. And you know what? We're gonna decimate your tower to pixels, bro. And maybe it's not gonna be visible after this. We're going to be going in for our Monk and then Guards. And the good thing about Monk is able to knock back the Hog Rider usually for only one hit. Fortunately for us, we were going to be able to get Bats here as well, right into a Mother Witch. So I like this composition where we've got Mother Witch and we've got a Mighty Monk. As soon as those Bats are dead and then they get turned into Pigs on our side, we can find the perfect opportunity to use the Monk ability, trounce his Tower, his Spear Goblins, and his Musketeer. And then we turn his Valkyrie into a Pig too. And the best part is... Oh my gosh, wait, the tower wasn't even targeting the Mother Witch. That's literally ridiculous. The Mother Witch was creating offense that we should not be able to get. And now he doesn't have Zap and Cycle because he just cycled that. So he's going to get bombarded by Wall Breakers with no small spell. So then he's got to go run it back again. Wait, he has to go for Bats Part 2. Wait, bro, do you not realize how bad this was for you last time? <laughs> he was literally forced into it. And this time we're going to get another pig in front of the guards. So we're just pigging out with damage everywhere. And it looks like this guy... New York is in a damsel in distress situation, and he's totally done for. See you later, brother. This is our US Open, and it seems like we just hit a winner on this guy's three crown. GG, well played, and peace out, buddy. We're just going to jump on the next one. That was so easy. Rarely can minor control decks wreck opponents this quickly, but with the power of Monk and Mother Witch, you basically have a beatdown deck. The amount of offense that you can quickly pump out is ridiculous. Hey, this guy's got the new Electro Giant banner. Let's get it. So, he's got a pretty shocky clan with the sports. See what sports ball clan he's going to be throwing at us. Definitely want to see if he's going to be a good sport, if he's going to be a bad sport, and decide to spam all of his elixir in the left-hand side after he destroys our bomber with the phoenix. Generally, when they've got the opportunity to... Wait! He's not going to activate King Tower! Never mind, we're chilling. I think the phoenix screwed him over because I'm pretty sure we'd have been in a much better spot if that hadn't happened. Oh, also, since he's dropping Electro Giant really far away on the left-hand side from the corner of the bridge, I didn't feel comfortable doing anything other than what I just did. Also, I want to go for a guard, so I'm going to be able to go and pull the knight away, and then I'm pretty confident we're going to be able to defend this minimalistically. Not going to take that much damage since we do have the Evo Bomber to bounce onto those archers and defend really reliably. The Evolved Bomber became one of the best defensive cards in the game, and it used to be one of the best offensive cards where it kind of works well with this deck and maybe like Wall Breakers or Goblin Drill, but for the most part, it just doesn't reach from across the river, middle of your tower, to your opponent's tower like it used to. So it's a lot better on defense where it's able to splash onto a lot of things that your opponent clumps up. At least that's my preferred route of defense with the card. I want to go in for minion hordes most of the time because if our opponent doesn't have enough elixir for the electro giant after dropping tornado, it's going to be hard for him to deal with this. Most of the time, he just takes a lot of damage or has to overspend with the phoenix that he doesn't want to drop. And we can start to use our monk on defense against the electro giant if we don't use our mortar, but mortar is by far the best answer to electro giant. So that's what we're going to be trying to use because usually electro giant does all of its damage from reflections, right? So for the same reason that 
Electro Giant never runs freeze because you want your opponent's cards to attack the Electro Giant so you can reflect them back. Cards that don't attack the Electro Giant, like the Mortar, are extremely broken. So that is one of the reasons that we like it so much. Also, I believe that we're going to be able to spam some piggies up in here and then go for our wall breakers as well. The cool thing that we can do is if anything's like half health, we say hello to it with our mother witch pigs and then we use that as cannon fodder for our wall breakers. We forced out a lot of extra elixir there. I want to actually go and spam him aggressively here. Get him to electro giant and just like knock it back with a monk. I wonder why he wouldn't e-giant there. Okay, there it is. Very cool. All right, so I think this is awesome because we're going to go use our monk and knock everything back. Obviously, the archers are possibly going to be a problem, but it's not going to be that big of a deal since we do have guards to clean up the rest of his stuff. Unfortunately, the archer on the left will deal a lot of damage, but him tornadoing is just a huge overextension. He's exerting way too much elixir on that side when it didn't even matter. He's got most of his damage left. We're going for our wall breakers here, and then we're going to try to go and use our minion horde afterward. I don't love doing this, but it is a necessity at this point. I also think that I'm probably going to be better off going in for guards on defense against the knight and then going for more mortars. Generally, when we've got the Mortar Revolution, that's going to wreck Electro Giant, but since we don't have that, we're kind of having to utilize our bombers and trying to break through really good defenses with bowlers and aggressive tornadoes and Electro Giants. Like, this guy is no joke. But maybe we can make a joke of him soon because we do have the Monk to knock back the bowlers. So I wonder if this bowler is going to hurt him. I don't think this is going to end up great for him at any stretch of the imagination. Look at the bowler shots. He's hitting his own tower. Yo, I didn't know you had the tower ability to do that, bro. <laughs> we have the power to hit your own tower. Get wrecked, my guy. That must feel awful. I mean, that's just literally horrible for him. And this is horrifying that he doesn't have Elixir to go and catapult an Electro Giant in the face of the Minion Horde immediately. He's forced to go for Archers, and that's just going to be a struggle. He's on the struggle bus for sure. The cool thing that we have available is constantly able to go in for the monk ability and then reflect back whatever our opponent does and then go in for our wall breakers because, I mean, think about it from the perspective of like, how is he supposed to stop the wall breakers when the monk is tanking for everything? Monk, do not push that electric giant closer to my tower. Oh my gosh. Have you guys ever lost the game because the monk has pushed a card closer to your tower? It has happened to me before with electric giant very specifically and I'm not trying to repeat that today. So I'm going to go in for our guards here. I want to go in for minion horde directly on top of this. And then I think it's better for me to just consistently go in for, uh, I think, like a mortar here, just to go and pull everything back. I, I was considering doing other plays, but this just seems like by far the best maneuver. Since we still have the Evolve Bomber chipping away on top of the Electro Giant, there's no way that he's going to be able to get guaranteed damage on our tower here. And then I'm pretty confident that we can go in for another Minion Horde because he has to go in for Electro Giants to kill the Minion Horde. That's the only way that he can do it. And then we can use our Monk and knock everything back and then go in for another Mortar. Fortunately, the monk is actually relatively intelligent. Not all the time, but sometimes he's a smart, sophisticated sir. Now we're going to go and use his archers to our advantage. Get two piggies. Wait, we're going to get three. If we can blast down this bomb tower, we might just win the game. So that's what I'm going to go for. Yo, he's going to have to like lightning cycle me, but there's no shot. He even knows at this point. If you guys are scared about playing against Electro Giant decks or some of the best defenses in the game, specifically with a bowler and cards like Tornado, you're still going to win the match as long as you keep up the pressure. And don't push Electro Giant towards your tower using your mod. Electro Giant is often one of the most triggering cards to face on ladder because it's everywhere and it's got super solid defenses. But this Mortar Mayhem deck creates chaos and counters every Electro Giant. Hey, this guy's got the Evolved Ice Spirit banner. Y'all already know he is definitely not displaying that card in his deck. But maybe he's a fan of how it looks. It is cute after all. I'm going to go for a mortar on top of his mortar. And unfortunately, our mortar is not necessarily going to be able to get damage on the tower. But maybe if we're lucky, it will splash onto the knight. So if we see knight, ice spirit, and mortar, it's probably going to be a minor poison fast cycle deck. So identifying that early is going to be key in our defense. Generally, against someone that has minor poison, we want to go for guards here. Oh, wait, what? There's no way. He went for the minor in front. I guess he was scared of us potentially having a tornado. So he dropped it in the safe spot at the start, but I thought he would drop it in the back because... He, oh my gosh, we're running it back. We're running it back with the bats. Let's go. Finishing my sentence, I dropped it in the back to counter whatever he was going to drop in the back, the minor. Because usually when they have cards coming in the front, they'll also drop something in the back. So then you have to defend the back and the front at the same time. But this guy had a weird way of thinking. So I wasn't ready for that. Anyway, we're still in a decent spot. We can go for the bomber here on top of the knight and also the little prince. And then we can go in for guards. Ooh, ooh, this is looking really rough. Little Prince before the nerf would have actually locked into my tower there, but after the range nerf, it does not lock into the tower from a mile away, so that's good. Go for wall breakers in the right, just to apply pressure, maybe force out the mortar there, ideally. Oh, he's not ready. I mean, it's ridiculous that they give us this bats value every time. I did not understand that people did this, but I'm taking it. 
And we're taking it like a champ. We're getting a lot of damage in the right and forcing out the mortar to lock onto that. And the Mother Witch is hitting the tower too. Mother Witch is the MVP of my heart, for real. She is cooking. So I want some more home-cooked meals on his tower, ideally. If we can go and cook up some more pigs, that would be delicious. But I guess we can go in for a minion horde on the Little Prince because if he pops the ability, it does nothing. It just pops negative value in his face. Get a poison, that's fine. I think we can go for wall breakers if we want. Oh my gosh, the minion horde still locked tower. All right. Our strategy, if we want to be as devious as possible, is drop the monk and both the evolutions and laugh at him as he can't counter anything. That's what the game plan is. He'll probably go bats and then we just win. Wait, watch this. I believe the bomber locks onto that and then, oh no, no, no. It's hitting the knight. No, it's hitting the tower. It's hitting the tower. Let's freaking go. Yo, that was ridiculous damage. How did I do more damage than a five elixir mortar evolution? Yo, Clash Royale, let's talk about this for a second. Also, my evil wall breakers exploding in the face of the evo bats allowed us to defend. I thought that might have been stupid. And I didn't want to commentate until it actually worked. <laughs> and it worked. I had no clue if that was going to work out in our favor, but it was brilliant for us. All right, we need to be able to finish this off. We have 100 HP and a dream, and he's poisoning me. Wait, he's going to miner me any second. I need to stop that. How can I stop the miner? Uh, okay, let's wall breakers. Let's pray that we can find a way to defend that with like no other units. Wallbreaker needs to connect. Miner's coming down. Poison takes my tower. Dang it. Oh, that was destined to die no matter what happened. But no poison in cycle is really good for me. What if I do one of these? What if I go in for one of these, my dudes? I think I can spam a minion horde again. I think we run it back. I think we set up another attack. I think this is looking really brink for him. I mean, he's on the brink of extinction. There's no way. He is definitely in a terrible position at this point. If we can get the Evo Bomber to hit one more time, or the Wall Breakers to connect, the Miner's tanking. Oh, come on. He's playing so well now. I don't appreciate it. We're going to follow through with another Minion Horde, and I think we're just going to let that Mortar lock. Not that big of a deal. I'm going to see what else he does. Go for a Bomber afterward. Maybe go in for guards directly on the Little Prince, and then Miner. I'm hoping that we can snipe the Little Prince before it pops the ability. No ability for him. Wait, we can go for Wall Breakers in the middle. These Evo Bats are a nuisance. Please let me get the damage on them to finish them off. That's huge. Wait, the wall breaker connected again? What the heck? How did that even happen? That's just illogical. We can drop the monk in the middle and finish him off with direct damage. You can't stop the monk from reflecting back damage in your face. You can only wish that your prince's tower turned into a pacifist. Instead, you got punched by the monk fist in the face. It's a special type of disrespect to finish off your opponent's tower with their own tower shots. And I can't lie, cycling evolutions with an overpowered monk is absolutely devious. Punch the like button if you enjoyed today's video, subscribe for more daily content, and have an amazing rest of your day.